Shalom, my friends. Someone asked me to uh, cover the book of Daniel in relationship to uh, the book of Revelation. And uh, I'm partly tempted to, uh, to do the whole book uh, verse by verse. But instead, I think um, I might do more of a synopsis, although uh, it'll be a bit lengthy. So um, I think I'm just going to cover uh, verses that um, I've made notes on in my in my book, uh, which means quite a few. But uh, the book of Daniel, Daniel was known as the Beloved Prophet. Yeshua himself admonishes us to understand this book. Take a look at uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15 where Yeshua says, When you see the abomination that lays waste, spoken of by Daniel, the Navi, the prophet, put up in the Mikdash. He who reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Yehuda, Judah, flee to the mountains. Of course, <laughs> I'm reading from the Hallelujah Scriptures. <clears throat> And uh, you can also look at Mark chapter 13, verse 14. Uh, Yeshua refers to Daniel again. He's admonishing us to understand the book of Daniel. Now, aside from Yeshua, Daniel and Joseph are the only ones in all Scripture of which no evil is spoken. That says a lot. Uh, in Daniel chapter 1, verse uh, 3, it says the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family. That is referring to the children of uh, Judah. And uh, when, when you read about Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I always like to say Shadrach, Meshach, and away we go. But um, Those are pagan names. And um, it really is better to recall their, their Hebrew names, which is Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Shadrach means illumined, illumined by the sun god, Meshach means who is like the moon god. The moon god is worshipped by Islam. And then Abednego means the shining fire, which reminds me of uh, the Nechash. That's Satan's uh, referred to as the Nechash in Genesis, and that means the shining one. Oh, a yeah, good point is in Daniel uh, chapter 1 and verse 12 is often misunderstood. It reads, Please try your servants for ten days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Some other versions say, Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Um, this, this is not referring to vegetarianism. What did I say? <laughs> vegetarian. <laughs> Sorry. It's not referring to being a vegetarian. Um, it's referring to the avoidance of eating meat that's sacrificed to idols. Um, chapter 2, verse 2. Some versions uh, refer to uh, magicians there. 
Uh, hallelujah. Scripture says, And the sovereign gave orders to call the magicians and the astrologers and the practicers of witchcraft and the Kazdites to declare to the sovereign his dreams. Um, magicians here um, is not referring to magic at all. It's, the word there really should be scholars. Now, um, further on in chapter 2, verse 27... Uh, we read, Daniel answered before the sovereign and said, The secret which the sovereign is asking, the wise ones, the astrologers, the magicians. And uh, we know that um, magicians means we should read scholars there. And the diviners who are unable to show it to the sovereign. Um... But there is an Ela in the Shamaim who reveals secrets and he has made known to Saber Nebuchadnezzar what is to be in the latter days. Um, that's referring to the last days. And um, I love it, you know, with Daniel as well as with Joseph. Um, you know, Nebuchadnezzar here, he's, he's asking all these, uh, all these guys, I had a dream. Um, I want you to not only interpret my dream, but I want you to tell me what I dreamt. Or, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> it's a pretty tall order. Um, but Daniel, as, as well as Joseph, both reacted to these uh, kind of requests, saying... Um, I can't interpret your dream, but my Elohim can. Boy, there's faith. Because he didn't know what the dream was, he, much less how to interpret it. How can you interpret it if you don't know what it is? But he knew his relationship with Elohim was so strong um, that Elohim would reveal it to him. Um, and he did. I mean, he told him what he dreamt and what it meant. We uh, move ahead here to uh, chapter 2 and verse 32, where he's getting into the dream. He says, uh, the image's head was of fine gold. Um, gold is referring to the reign of Babylon. Its chest and arms are of silver. Uh, Babylon, you could also say Iraq. Iraq. Um, silver is Persia, today known as Iran. They only changed the name from Persia to Iran um, a couple of decades ago, two or three. And its abdomen and thighs of bronze. That's the Grecian Empire. Um, its legs are of iron. That's the Roman Empire. Its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. That would refer to uh, various nations. If we read on, you were looking on until a stone was cut out without hands and it smote the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Um, then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind took them away so that no trace of them was found, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled all the earth. This is the dream and its interpretation. Um, here where he's talking about uh, everything being broken into pieces um, <laughs> and uh, the stone that smote the image that's Yeshua some versions say the rock Yeshua is the rock he is the stone we go on further to uh, verse 38 
Wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field, the birds of the Shamayim, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold, Babylon. After you, another kingdom will rise, inferior to yours. That's the silver, Persia, Iran. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. That's Greece. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, verse 40. Fourth, the fourth reign is as strong as iron because iron crushes and shatters all. So like iron, that breaks in pieces, it crushes and breaks all these. Um, Rome was divided in 476 A.D., Verse 41, yet as you saw the feet and toes partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the rain is to be divided. That happened with Rome in 476 A.D. Uh, but some of the strength of the iron is to be in it because you saw the iron mixed with muddy clay. Um, we get down to verse 43. As you saw, iron mixed with muddy clay, they are mixing themselves with the seed of men. This is a, a curious verse. They are mixing themselves with the seed of men, but they're not clinging to each other, even as iron does not mix with clay. The King James Version also says, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, Obviously, they are not men or the seed of men. So who's being spoken of here that they are going to mix themselves with the seed of men? Um, I think that's referring to the Nephilim. The Rephaim. The last days are like the days of Noah. Let's take a peek at... Uh, Luke, chapter 17, and uh, verse 26 and 7, where we read, As it came to be in the days of Noah, so also shall it be in the days of the Ben of Adam, the son of Adam. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah went into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. You know, it says just as it was in the days of Noah when um, devils and women were given in marriage. I mean, this could be referring to um, the, the fallen ones, the Nephilim, um, they took women, and uh, they married them, and they had offspring. Um, you could also see this in Matthew chapter 24, verse 38, Luke chapter 20, verse 36. So, um, you know, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Back to Daniel. Um, I think this is referring again, uh, Satan, you know, he's been trying to create his own bloodline ever since day one. Uh, back in the days of Noah, the fallen ones were taking women and uh, they were marrying them. And they had offspring. And, uh, you know, that was Satan trying to create his own bloodline and also trying to mess up the bloodline of Mashiach, the Messiah. He, uh, of course, failed at that and that's why uh, Yahuwah created the great flood and um, got rid of all that. You know, it says um, Noah was perfect in his ways. Really means his bloodline or his blood was clean. Uh, there was no mixed seed going on there. And, uh, you know, there was just Noah and seven others that were saved through the flood. But it says, you know, um, the uh, fallen ones were... Uh, you know, doing this uh, after the flood as well. And that means it's probably going on even to this day. Um, in chapter 3, we get into uh, the furnace, <laughs> where we see Hananiah, 
Mishael and Azariah, um, they go in, they see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, four men. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> the fourth one, they said, it looks like the, uh, the Ben of Ella, Ela, the son of uh, Elohim. Um, but uh, they were not burned. They turned that fire up seven times hotter and they weren't burned. Um, but their, their bonds where they were bound together, that, that was burned, but they were untouched. The furnace here uh, represents the Great Tribulation. They're um, the three in the fire, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Uh, that represents Israel being kept safely through uh, just like Noah and his represented Israel in the Great Flood. They were kept safely through the Great Flood. Um, Enoch was taken up. He represents uh, the called out ones being raptured before the trib. The Great Flood represents the tri trib and uh, uh, Noah represents Israel being kept safely through. Same thing here. Uh, the three in the fire represents e Israel being kept safe through the Great Tribulation. And um, the curious thing here is, uh, where's Daniel during this time? He's out of town. And that represents the called out ones. They're out of town too during the Great Tribulation. They're in Shamaim. Um, not uh, a, having anything to do with what's going on. Uh, in the earth. Now, um, chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar's dream of a tree. This chapter was written by a Gentile, uh, and it's to the world. It's a different dream. Again, you see magicians mentioned there. Those are scholars. And in uh, chapter 4, verse 17, We read, uh, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the command by the word of the Kodeshim, the dedicated ones. Um, Kodesh. I talk about this in my video about uh, making your own tzitzit. Kodesh is usually when you see the word holy in your Bible, the, the uh, Hebrew word there is Kodesh. And, um, I prefer using Kodesh, as you'll see in the Hallelujah Scriptures, um, because when we think of the word holy, we get all kinds of crazy ideas in our heads. I mean, candles and stained glass windows, statues of angels, and you know, what does holy mean? Focus on the word Kodesh. Kodesh means dedicated to one thing only. In my video, I, I uh, point out my spoon that I use for stirring the dye. That spoon is not used for anything else. It is dedicated to stirring dye only, and that makes it a Kodesh spoon. So here you see the Kodeshim. Those are the dedicated ones, so that the living know that the Most High is ruler in the reign of men and gives it to whomever he wants and appoints over it the lowest of men. Um, we can see uh, the watchers. First Kings, chapter 22, verse 20. You see where Yahweh allows uh, his... Kodeshim, to make decisions and exercise their free will. So that's what we're looking at here. If we look at chapter 4, verse 19, it says, uh, Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was stunned for a short time and his thoughts alarmed him. 
uh, in the original Hebrew there, that's, uh, that short time is about an hour. Uh, let's skip ahead to uh, verse 30, where we read, uh, The sovereign spoke and said, Is not this great Babel, which I myself have built for the house of the rain, by the might of my power, and for the esteem of my splendor, for the might of my power, for the esteem of my splendor? Yahweh hates pride. That's what's being pointed out here. You can take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 4, and Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Um, <laughs> gets a little interesting here. Go down to uh, verse 33. In that hour, the word was executed on Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and he ate grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of the Shamayim, till his hair had grown like eagles, and his nails like birds. <laughs> Here you see Shamayim, you know, sometimes heaven means, you know, the air. Uh, you know, like where the clouds are and so on. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to the Shamayim, and my understanding returned to me. Nebuchadnezzar um, here thought he was an ox. He was stricken with what we might call lycanthropy. Lycanthropy. That's the Wolfman Syndrome. You ever see the movie with Lon Chaney? It's a pretty, pretty good movie. But it's believed that Daniel cared for Nebuchadnezzar all this time. If we look up at uh, verse 31, we see, The word was still in the sovereign's mouth when a voice fell from the Shamayim, saying, Sovereign Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The rain has been taken away from you. And you are driven away from men, and your dwelling is to be with the beasts of the field. You are given grass to eat like oxen, and seven seasons shall pass over you until you know that the Most High is ruler of the reign of men, and he gives it to whomever he wants. And uh, then we see what we read in that hour. The word was executed on Nebuchadnezzar, and uh, he was stricken with wolfman syndrome. Now, you know, Babylon is more than just a place. It is the fountain of idolatry. It's known as the city of Satan. It's 62 miles south of Baghdad or Iraq, east of Eden. Here in Dan, you know, Babylon is at its peak, 15 miles to each side Walls 150 feet high, 87 feet wide, 250 towers that were 250 feet high. Uh, it was quite a city. But, um, you know, we see 360 degrees are in a circle, 60 minutes per hour, 60 seconds per minute. The Zodiac, the 12 signs of the Zodiac, all of these things came out of Babylon. All are forms of pharmakeia. The Greek word pharmakeia is often um, interpreted uh, as sorcery in the New Testament. Uh, we see it in the book of Revelation. I mention it in my, uh, my study on the, uh, the book of Revelation. Quite a few videos there. Um, we see sorcery, but really it's pharmakeia. And look at the pharmaceutical industry today. Hello. In chapter 5, we see uh, Belshazzar, the sovereign, um, otherwise known as King Belshazzar. Uh, he was known as Evil Merodach. It's either Nebuchadnezzar's son or his grandson. But um, if we look at verse 3 in chapter 5, uh, they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from 
the Hechel of the house of Ela, which had been in Yerushalayim, and the sovereign and his great men, his wives and his concubines, drank out of them. This is literally insulting Yahuwah. Um, and if you move down to verse uh, verse 5, it says, At that moment the finger of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the sovereign's palace. The sovereign saw the part of the hand that wrote, and then the sovereign's color changed and his thoughts alarmed him so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees <laughs> knocked against each other. Um, the joints of his loins were loosed. This is the, the, uh, the famous writing on the wall. The Hallelujah Scriptures gives a, the proper uh, Hebrew where you don't, you don't see the joints of his loins being loosed in most English translations. Um, hallelujah, scripture says the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked together. And he called loudly, bring the astrologers, the Kazdites, diviners, and uh, so on and so forth. I'm trying to find out what happened here. 